Welcome to TalkNorth.com. Thanks to our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Please download before you listen. If you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at TalkNorthPodcast at gmail.com. And please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. Uh, two promo codes to be aware of. BiteSquad.com. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. And go to SodaStick.com, the great local apparel company. Use the promo code YouBetcha to get free shipping on any sized order. of football but also a lot of other stuff to discuss with john millay here on preps today with john millay this is our high school sports show with john millay from the mshsl.org you can find his work there at john's journal uh, please follow our show and our network at talk north pod on twitter we have some announcements coming up in the future we'd like you to be privy to also a great way to see all the shows that we put out uh, across all the sports that we cover and we're going to be expanding our uh, our coverage field here pretty shortly thanks to our producer brandon morton and uh, thank you to our sponsors pizza barn in princeton and bite squad.com so tell me about prep bowl 38 john yeah or as we say in latin uh, or in roman numerals prep bowl xxx V I I I. Of course, yeah, that, yeah, we're not the NFL, so we don't have to be that dumb about it. <laughs> Prep Bowl 38. We're going to be smarter than the NFL. That's right. Yeah, we had a great weekend, Jim, Friday and Saturday at the U.S. Bank Stadium. This was maybe the best collection of Prep Bowl games I've seen, I think, maybe in a long time. Seven games. And, you know, no really massive blowouts, no running time. Several of these games went right down to the very last play. So I'll kind of recap. Uh, starting with the big schools, going down to the small schools. Class 6A, YZ finishes an undefeated season, beats Champlain Park 35-20. to And the workhorse of the Prep Bowl this year was Christian Vassar, senior running back from YZ. In the uh, semifinals, we thought he had a good game in the semifinals when uh, YZ beat Lakeville South. Uh, he ran for 269 yards and three touchdowns. That was just, as we say, he was just clearing his throat in that game. So, in the prep bowl win over Champlain Park, he sets a prep bowl record with 49 carries and tied the prep bowl record with five rushing touchdowns for the Trojans in that 35-20 win over Champlain Park. That that was phenomenal. Kid was uh, clearly, you'd think he was worn out, but after the game, he said, oh, I feel pretty good. So after 49 carries. 49 carries. That's like 49 <laughs> car wrecks. That's amazing. I, I, I did, somebody had gone through his three state tournament games he had like 800 yards in those three games oh. i mean that's you know that's an nfl season for a lot of running backs and uh, he did it in his last three games so way to go uh, christian Vassar. that was that was outstanding that's just the epitome of a hard of a hard charge and running back and, and he's fast and he's quick and he's super strong Really, really fun to watch there. And I don't think anybody was surprised to see YZ, which kind of became the dominant team as the season went on and uh, finished an unde- undefeated record. And uh, Champion Park clearly had a great season, too. Just couldn't quite muster the offense against uh, YZ's really good defense in that, in that running game. 5A was the only trip ball game that was a rematch from the regular season. Yeah, on the, in week eight, the final game of the regular season. Chaska beat St. Thomas Academy 20 to nothing. This game was not going to end up like that. It was pretty clear from the get-go, a real defensive battle. This was the last game of the weekend on Saturday afternoon. And it was, uh, you know, the winning touchdown in a 10 to 7 game. Chaska beat St. Thomas Academy 10 to 7, scoring the winning touchdown with 42 seconds to go in the game. And so it's 7 to 3. The cadets are ahead of Chaska. So then, uh, Chaska goes 80 yards in 10 plays, and uh, one of the great names in high school football, Stevo, S-T-E-V-O, Stevo Klotz, K-L-O-T-Z, Stevo Klotz, if you're scoring at home, 
scores a one yard touchdown run with 42 seconds left. And that was really fun. There was a big crowd in the building for that. Uh, first uh, football state championship for Chaska. Everybody from Chaska was there. Really exciting. Uh, I shot some video of that, which you can see on the uh, social media accounts of, of the winning touchdown and the crowd reaction. And uh, re really fun time. Now in Foray, this was probably the game of the, of the prep bowl Ricori against uh, SND, which is the Jalen Sucks team. We've talked about that. Uh, St. Paul Academy, Minnehaha Academy, Blake. It's a co-op team. So this went into overtime. It was 14 to 14 after regulation. Uh, you know, Ricori had two losses this year. They lost to, I saw them lose at Becker. They also lost to Hutchinson. And SMB has, has been really dominant. So, you know, SMB is the team everybody figures is just going to win, except people who live at, up in Ricori. So it's it. So we go into overtime, 14-14, high school rules. You get the ball at the 10-yard line. So Suggs threw a six-yard pass to Terry Lockett. Uh, for SMB, they had the ball first in overtime. They kicked the extra point. SMB 21, Ricori. Uh, 14 and uh, before Ricari's overtime chance. So they get the ball and they are, it's just not working for Ricari. There was a penalty, there was a loss. So it's fourth and goal from the 15. And this is the last gasp for Ricari and their quarterback, Jack Style, who is a phenomenal athlete. He's going to play baseball at Nebraska. That's how good of an athlete he is. So in his second sport, he, uh, he throws a touchdown pass, fifth, fourth and goal from the 15 to Jaden Philippi. So, they don't kick the extra point to go to the second overtime. They're going to go for two. How gutsy is that in the prep ball? And they line up in the old swinging gate formation. And if people aren't familiar with that, there's about seven players way over on the left side of the hash marks. The center and Jack Style and a couple other guys are way over on the right hash mark. So, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. And uh, basically, shotgun snap. One of those guys on the right side gets right tucked in right past the goal line on the corner. And uh, a low pass, he's down on his knees, picks it up. Jalen Suggs might have got a hand on it as the defensive back, but two-point conversion is good. Ricori wins the game, 22-21 to 21 in overtime, and and uh, it was wild, man. Those Ricori kids really celebrated. As I put out some video of that, too. I was on the sideline. Uh, Eric Decker, a famous Ricori grad, former gopher, former NFL player, he was there to watch it. And as we all know, the next morning he was on the ESPN set uh, over at the U predicting go a Gophers win over Wisconsin, and we don't need to talk about that. Let's move on to the next prep bowl game <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of uh, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's stay with high school football. That's worked out well here for us. So three A, uh, this was a great game too, a one point game. Piers, uh, which was the number one ranked team all year, beats Dassel Cocado twenty eight to twenty seven. Talk about great athletes. You know, I've already mentioned a few, but Matthias Augerin from Pierce is a senior. He's going to be a track athlete at uh, Nebraska, another kid going to Nebraska. So he ran for 165 yards and three touchdowns for Pierce. He scores the winning touchdown with 38 seconds to go. This one goes down to the final 38 seconds. And uh, this Dassel Cocada team was really fun to watch. They were seated third in their section, and they came 30 seconds away from winning the, st the state title. Great story there. Congratulations to both teams. And two way, the juggernaut from Caledonia does it again. They beat Minneapolis North 26 to nothing. Uh, pretty surprising that, that they shut out North. North is a great team. But they just had too much, too much uh, muscle, too much speed, and Caledonia. All they did was tie the state record. This is their fifth consecutive football championship, and the all-time uh, record for longest football winning streak set by Stephen Argyle in the early 2000s is 76 games. Caledonia's streak is now at 68. So next season they will, uh, if they, if they, you know, keep rolling next season, they're going to have a chance to match and or equal that 76 victories in a row. That is really fun football down in Caledonia. Uh, the last two games here, Class 1A, Blooming Prairie beats Bold. Pretty convincingly, 41-15, to 15, and that was probably a surprise to some people. Bold was in the prep bowl last year, uh, did not win it last year, and as it turned out, Blooming Prairie came out on top this year. And the Awesome Blossoms, there's, there's the nickname of the year, the Awesome Blossoms from Blooming Prairie. They'd never played in the prep bowl before, but they came out strong. This, they had a great team. This was a good year for the for the Blossoms and Bold. Uh, congratulations to the Warriors, state runner-up for the second year in a row. 
And in nine man, another great game. Uh, Mountain Lake beats Hancock twenty two to fourteen. This is how dominant Mountain Lake was this year. They had not trailed in a football game all season until the prep bowl, and Hancock raced right out uh, to a fourteen zip lead. And then the second half, Mountain Lake uh, kind of put it together, and they go on to win twenty two to fourteen. You know the crowds were good. The weather wasn't great. You had the conflict with the Gophers Wisconsin game also on TV, but I thought the crowds were really good for the Prep Bowl gym. And uh, boy, it's it sure is fun playing in that stadium. I was looking at social media posts from other states. You know, not to mention you know like some some football games this week, and including the Gophers and the Packers game in New York and the snow and the rain. And boy, we were nice and tidy. And there were other high school championship games around the country, you know, tournament games played in not great weather. Although I did see some Hawaiian football uh, playoff games from Aloha Stadium. That looked rather pleasant as well. So we're lucky to have the facilities we do. We talk about that a lot. But uh, I, I think this was this was maybe the most enjoyable prep bowl weekend I've had. And I've been doing this for a long time. It just was uh, really, really fun. I wrote something. You know, I really don't write game stories, but I was kind of collecting quotes and scenes as the weekend went on. And if you go to John's journal at MSHSL.org, you can kind of see my wrap up of the things that go on behind the scenes, especially in the press conference, uh, post-game press conference room with players and coaches, Some really, really special things that went on. So if you want to read about that, that's uh, on John's journal at MSHSL.org. Great stuff. We're going to buzz through all kinds of other topics here. We do want to thank our primary sponsor, Pizza Barn in Princeton, pizzabarnprinceton.com. Beer specials, pizza specials, creative, very creative pizza specials, and a great community business. Yeah, you're right, Jim. The Jody Stay, who runs the show up there, and her family and all the employees are great. And I've got some breaking news. It's just uh, as we record this, we're barely into December, but I'm, I already know what the December pizza of the month is jody tipped me off to this before she made it public it's s'mores pizza which you know s'mores in minnesota you sit by the lake around the fire you make s'mores and so she 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 texted me with why s'mores why are they going with s'mores and her answers are because winter has barely started and we already miss summer that's that's accurate and we all blow our diets in december anyway so the pizza barn can help with that you order the s'more pizza and here are the details. This uh, this sounds pretty good. They all they all are great up there. This one sounds pretty special. So there's pieces of chocolate on this pizza, marshmallows, graham crackers. That's all on top of a sweet cream base, and then tying it all together is the traditional pizza crust. And according to Joey, it's sticky and gooey, just like real s'mores. So that is. Uh, Boy, talk about inventive. That is really good. We've talked about their famous cow pie pizza and, and everything else, but uh, the s'more pizza, that, uh, yeah, I might have to just uh, make a run to Princeton. And if you're in Princeton, uh, obviously you want to go to Pizza Barn in Princeton, but even if you're just going north or south of 169 anywhere near Princeton, it's yeah. really easy to pop over and hit hit the Pizza Barn. And uh, cool place. Uh, yeah. n- newly renovated, great people. Yeah. Uh, usually, high school kids working in there. It's it, we really highly recommend it as a pizza and an experience. You bet. Uh, Speaking of people driving on one sixty nine, I got a Twitter note from a guy I know. His name's JJ Aiken. I knew him as a high school athlete at, in Farmington. I don't. He now works at Gustavus down in St. Peter. He might. He's either the president or the chancellor, and he'll laugh if he hears this. No, he's uh, he works in the admissions office or some administrative role at Gustavus, his alma mater. So JJ sent me a tweet and tagged the pizza barn in it that he he was heading up to the cabin, stopped and got some pizza and, and some garlic bread or some cheese bread and said it was just dynamite. So there you go. Somebody listening to the to the podcast took our advice and, and pulled off a 169, popped in there on the way to the cabin and, uh, and was, was very satisfied. And after I retweeted JJ's uh, tweet. There were a couple other people who said the same thing. They've they've done the exact same deal and and, and always loved it. So way to go, Pizza Bar. Excellent. Uh, nice gesture yeah. by the Vikings. Yeah, it's interesting, Jim. You know, the Vikings, they play at U.S. Bank Stadium, too, as well as the high school kids. And since they're, you know, they're not no home game this week, they got the Monday nighter with uh, with Seattle. They opened their locker room to all the prep bowl teams, and they just basically opened the doors. It's absolutely empty. There's the lockers don't even have names on them. But you know, you've been in there. There's all these great old photos and, and uh, 
stuff on the wall above the locker. It's really neat. It's a big room. So I saw team pictures in there of teams after they played. They stand with the trophy in the Vikings locker room. That's really special. If you want to go to the uh, MSHSL Facebook page, the cover photo right now 